Hey guys, we're ready to do um, section two of chapter three. The atmosphere is a mixture of gases that surrounds a planet like Earth. It's, they call it an envelope of gases. And nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide are the main components with a whole bunch of several small other little ones. They, the gases can be added to and removed from the atmosphere by the action of living organisms. Plants and animals and other microorganisms can add to and remove things from the atmosphere. Um, like the animals are going to remove oxygen when they breathe in and they're going to add carbon dioxide when they breathe out. So the atmosphere isn't static, it's changing all the time based on the actions of the organisms that live there. It can also be changed um, due to volcanic eruptions. They're also adding gases to the atmosphere. The volcanoes that we learned about in section one as part of the geosphere will also add gases to the atmosphere. And it, the, the job of the atmosphere is to insulate the Earth's surface, like putting a blanket on it. That slows the rate at which the surface loses heat, and it keeps the temperature at one that the living things can survive. Space is like negative 300 something degrees. So the atmosphere acts like a blanket for us to keep us warm. The sunlight will come in here from the, the, the light will come into the sun right here and will bounce around as heat. Okay, the light comes in, hits the earth, and then bounces back up as heat, and that helps keep us warm. What is in the atmosphere, the majority, the main thing in the atmosphere is nitrogen. Okay, nitrogen, N2, because it's two nitrogen stuck together if you remember your chemistry or remember your physical science, it's two nitrogen stuck together. But nitrogen is 78% of the whole atmosphere, okay? And that um, it enters when the volcanoes erupt and when dead plants and animals decay. Okay, but 78%, it's the majority. We would think that oxygen, because we breathe oxygen and oxygen is most important, we would think that oxygen was the biggest part of the atmosphere, but it's not. Nitrogen is the biggest part. Okay, nitrogen is 78%. Oxygen, it's the second most, but it's only about 21%. Okay, we've got a graph on the next page, I think. Oxygen is only about 21%. All right, and then beyond that, you have a lots of little bitty, small amounts of other gases and then atmospheric dust. Okay, so here's a, here's a map of it. Like we said, oxygen is 78, not a map, a pie chart. Oxy nitrogen is 78% of the atmosphere, okay? Oxygen is only 21, and then you have other gases um, that would be like carbon, carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor makes this other rema remainder, but it's only a little 1%, okay? Argon, carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor makes up that tiny little 1%. Now, the air, the atmosphere, is held onto the Earth by the Earth's gravity. And so the, the, the bigger any planet is, the more dense it is and the more gravity it has and the better chance it has to hold an atmosphere. Small things like our moon doesn't have an atmosphere because it's too small to have enough gravity to hold it. So the Earth's gravity, again, a factor of our geosphere, the spheres all work together. The gravity of the geosphere holds the atmosphere in place for us. All right, it's also the atmosphere is denser or thicker near the surface than it is further out. And you can see this mountain here, if you can see behind me, you see all these little dots or air molecules. And behind my head, it's very, very thick with air molecules down here at the bottom of the mountain and very thin with air molecules up at the top of the mountain. That's why the higher up in the mountains you go, the harder it is to breathe, especially the high mountains like the Himalayas or the Rockies, the real high mountains. It gets really hard to breathe up there um, because the air becomes less dense with elevation. Okay, so breathing at higher elevations is much more difficult. Now the atmosphere is divided up into five layers. Okay, the troposphere is down here closest to us. Okay, then the stratosphere, that's the next layer. The mesosphere, the thermosphere, 
and the exosphere is out here. Do you see how it's a little lighter blue compared to the black? The exosphere is where it's almost in space. Okay, exo means exiting out to space. And as you go through there, the temp these red this red line is showing you the temperatures. Okay, the temperatures change. That's one of the ways that they mark the levels out. And you see the ozone layer, okay, is part of the stratosphere. We'll talk about them some more in just a second. Hold on. The lowest level is the level we live in. It's called the troposphere. That's the level closest to Earth, okay? It goes about 18 kilometers or between 9 and 10 miles above. I think that's right. I have to check it. Uh, 18 kilometers, about 9 or 10 miles above uh, the surface of the Earth. Okay, this the lowest part. This is where we live, and this is where all of the weather happens. All weather happens, and nothing can nothing lives higher than the troposphere. Not the highest bird, not anything. And you see, even planes, okay, barely get to the top of it. The next layer up is the stratosphere. Okay, so this is troposphere where we live down here, and then stratosphere here includes the ozone layer that you've heard about. The ozone layer is part of the stratosphere. And it's the layer up. It's about um, 10 to 50 kilometers beyond this, okay, beyond the troposphere, 10 to 50 kilometers higher than that. As you get higher, the temperature goes up from there, okay? The ozone layer is absorbing ultraviolet rays from the sun. That's how the ozone protects us. I'll tell you about it in the next slide. But because it's absorbing that ultraviolet rays, it heats up the stratosphere. Okay, the stratosphere gets hot because the ozone is doing its job. Now ozone is actually three oxygen molecules stuck together in a triangle shape like this. O2, you know that's what we breathe, right? Oxygen? Oxygen is what we breathe. It's two oxygen molecules stuck together in what looks like a dumbbell. Okay, and that's what we breathe. Okay, the ozone is stuck in a triangle and it's actually poisonous to us. The ozone is up high in the upper level atmosphere, up in the stratosphere. Okay, almost all of the ozone in the earth is located in the stratosphere and it absorbs UV radiation for us. Radiation is going to um, burn us, like especially people as much as me, um, Ultraviolet radiation can burn me up in a minute, but the ozone layer absorbs 95% of the, the, the Earth's, the sun's ultraviolet rays for us. So it acts like a natural sunscreen for the planet. And that ultraviolet radiation, if all of that, like I said, it blocks 95% of the ultraviolet radiation from the sun to keep it from coming down here and burning us. Okay, because if that ultraviolet radiation came down here and burned us, it would damage living cells. For myself, even that small 5% that gets down here can burn me in a minute, red as a lobster, and can cause cancer. Okay, if we didn't have the ozone layer to protect us from that ultraviolet, we'd all be dying from the heat. Life couldn't live in that much uh, ultraviolet radiation. So the atmosphere, the ozone of the atmosphere protects us. The next layer up is called the mesosphere, okay? So if this is the stratosphere here, this is the mesosphere. Next layer up, all right? And the main thing that the mesosphere does for us, it protects us from incoming meteors. Meteorites, as they come through, burn up in the mesosphere before they hit us, okay? Most of them, there's meteorites coming down to us all the time, and um, the mesosphere saves us from them. It's about 80 kilometers, okay, up and down, and it's the coldest of all the layers. Again, it's the temperature change that lets us know between one layer and the next. As low as negative 93 degrees Celsius, really, really cold. The next layer up is called the thermosphere, and it's the hottest of all, except, you know, because that's where the word thermosphere comes from, except you would never feel it. Okay, you would never feel that the thermosphere was hot because the way you feel heat is the friction of air molecules rubbing against you and against your skin. The hotter something is, the faster those molecules move against you, right? And that's what the friction is what causes the heat, all right? Now, the thermosphere is the hottest layer, 
but there are so few air molecules that you wouldn't feel the heat. It's weird, right? It's the hottest of all of them because you're, they're right there with all that, all that radiation and everything that's coming through coming down from the sun all that radiation and stuff so it doesn't get to the earth okay this the radiation is being absorbed and so the temperatures can get up to 2,000 degrees Celsius but you don't feel the heat okay the air particles rarely collide because there's almost no air particles up there so the none very little of the heat is transferred and you would not feel hot it's just really really weird Okay, but it is over 2,000 degrees Celsius, but you would never know it because, again, the thing that causes heat is the molecules colliding, okay, and that friction of the molecules colliding. There's almost no molecules, so there's no collision, so you don't feel the heat, but it's there. Also, as part of the thermosphere, this is where we have um, the X-rays and the gamma rays coming from the sun they get absorbed in here and they become electrically charged all right they become electrically charged and if you remember your physical science an atom that gets a charge is called an ion if you remember your physical science an atom that gets a charge is called an ion so the x-rays and gamma rays charge the atoms that are up there and they become ions so we call part of the thermosphere the ionosphere just like with the stratosphere remember the ozone is part of the stratosphere the ionosphere is part of the thermosphere and in the ionosphere because those atoms are charged when the solar radiation comes across those atoms that are charged they send sparks the solar radiation comes across those charged atoms and sends sparks, and we see that as the northern lights. You heard about the northern lights in Alaska and Canada where you get these gorgeous, gorgeous lights? Okay, that's because of the charged atoms that are called ions in the ionosphere, which is part of the thermosphere. That's where the northern lights come from. So the next part of our lesson is to talk about how heat is transferred through the atmosphere. One of the main things that our atmosphere does for us, you know that the equator is hot and the poles are cold. The atmosphere will circulate the temperature so that you don't get too hot at the equator and too cold at the poles. It balances the temperature of the air. So this part of the lesson is showing us how does the heat move okay because you know it's hotter at the equator colder at the poles and the atmosphere helps to balance out the whole earth for us all right so there's three ways that heat energy can move it can move heat energy or energy any kind of energy not just heat energy but any kind of energy radiation means it's transferring in electromagnetic waves in all directions do you see my picture here Radiation means it's coming out in all directions. Conduction means you're traveling molecule by molecule. The molecules actually have to touch. If you've ever left a spoon on the stove and it gets hot, that's because of the conduction. The heat near the eye has gone up the spoon and you burn your hand with it. Now convection we've talked a little bit about. It's a cycle of heating and rising, cooling and sinking. That's one of the ways that the plates move. Remember, inside the mantle, you have the hot core, the magma rises up, or the, the mantle in the athenosphere rises up because it gets hot and it pushes the plates and then it sinks down back to the core and then it gets hot again and it rises up. Those circles, convection currents. And so the same thing is happening here on this skillet, right? It gets hot near the bottom and rises cool slightly and comes back down or worse the ones that are just rising push the others out of the way and they come back down and heat up so you have basically circles going on those are convection currents okay because hot um, hotter things the molecules in hot things the molecules are moving really really fast and they spread out so they're less dense when things are cold the molecules move slowly and come together and they are more dense so the colder something is it will sink the hotter something is it will float 
and then they start to trade places. Okay, so that's convection currents. So three different ways that heat energy can be transferred. All right, and this is one of the pictures of your book that shows you um, different ways that the heat energy can be transferred um, here on the Earth. Okay, and we'll do some more work with that in class. Okay, so the solar energy comes to the Earth as radiation in electromagnetic waves. Okay, radiation, that's the way that the heat goes off in all directions. So the sun's light and energy comes to us through electromagnetic radiation. Okay, about half of what comes through here hits the earth and it gets absorbed. But the other half is going to hit the atmosphere and bounce back out. Okay, it gets reflected off of um, the atmosphere, the clouds or dust. Okay, about half of it bounces back out, which is a good thing. Okay, because we don't want to sit here and cook our earth. Okay, so about half of it reaches us down here at the bottom, but about half of it bounces back out. But the earth doesn't keep on and keep on getting hotter. Okay, it doesn't just keep on getting hotter. Okay, the land and the, the, land and the oceans will radiate the absorbed, a lot of the absorbed heat back out into space. Okay, so half of it comes down all the way to us, but even that that comes all the way down, some of it gets bounced out. And the dark colored objects like the ocean are going to absorb more, but the light colored objects like the, the ice caps at the poles will bounce even more back out. Okay, so what, when we're thinking about um, global warming, okay, and the warmer that the earth gets, more and more of these ice caps are melting. Now remember what happens when you have something dark, like when in the winter time when you wear a dark shirt, you get hotter. Okay, that's why we wear dark colors in the winter time because it will absorb the heat. And lighter colors in the summertime will bounce the heat off. Okay, that's why we wear those colors in the seasons. Well, the same thing's happening on Earth. It's called the albedo effect. Albedo, down here the albedo effect. All right, so because the oceans are darker, they absorb the sun's light and they start to heat up. What's supposed to happen is the ice caps will reflect a lot of the heat back out into space. But as we're melting the ice caps, there's less and less of it available to bounce the heat out and more of the heat starts to get absorbed in the ocean and the ocean gets even hotter and then more of the ice caps melt and so less gets bounced out and the oceans get hotter and hotter and hotter. It's like a positive feedback loop where it gets worse and worse and worse as you go on through. The hotter it gets, the more ice melts and less heat's reflected. So the hotter it gets and more ice melts. So less heat's reflected. It just gets worse and worse and worse. It's the albedo effect. And that's one of the things that we're really, really, really worried about with global warming. Because once it gets started, it just gets worse and worse, faster and faster and faster. Now, when we're trying to get the air moving in the atmosphere, okay, we talked about these convection currents. Okay, radiation is the way that the sun's light comes to us. Remember, there's three kinds of heat transfer, radiation, conduction, and convection. All right, so with radiation, that's how the sun's light comes to us, okay, out in all directions. Now, convection works where the denser material sinks because it's colder. Colder and denser starts to sink, hits the surface of the earth, warms up, becomes less dense and floats, goes to the upper atmosphere, cools down, becomes denser, sinks back down, hits the surface, warms up and spreads out, goes to the upper atmosphere, cools and condenses and sinks. So it's this cycle of heating, rising, cooling and sinking based on the density, meaning how close together the molecules are. When they get cold, they huddle close together, they become denser and they sink. Okay, heating, rising, cooling and sinking. Okay, it's a convection current. One of the main things about our, greenhouse, our, our atmosphere is the processes that happen in the greenhouse effect. Okay, it's the warming of the Earth's surface in the lower atmosphere. 
okay because we talked about it a little bit already it is a natural process now when we think of the when we think of the greenhouse effect especially in the news right now it's bad because of how much carbon and stuff we have in the atmosphere but it's not supposed to be bad it's just a natural process and without it the earth would be too cold to live so the way that it works is the sun's light comes down let me put it in red here the sun's light energy comes down from the sun okay it strikes the earth and the oceans all right and then it bounces back up in the atmosphere as heat and then it bounces back down and back up again so this bouncing back up the re-radiation or the reflection the re-radiate right here that's the word that means bounces back up when it bounces back up it heats our atmosphere for us and this is the only reason that that we can live here on earth because the sun's light strikes the earth some of it bounces back out into space okay but the stuff that strikes bounces back up and starts to warm our atmosphere that's the re-radiate right there that means bounces back up as heat. The greenhouse effect look, works sort of like when you leave your car parked in the sun. The sunlight, the light energy, can come in with no trouble at all. When it hits the dark surfaces inside your car, it re-radiates out as heat. But, see the window over here? It's got nowhere to go. So it bounces back down, heats up even more, and bounces back up, still nowhere to go, and it bounces up and bounces up, and it's the circle inside of there makes the car heat up so incredibly fast. All right? And so um, it gets so hot and so quick because of the, the window is blocked. No heat can get out. Now, on the Earth, certain amounts of small heat are allowed to get out. Okay, we allow small amounts of heat to get out, but if we continue to thicken our atmosphere with the burning of fossil fuels, it's like when you, in the summertime, if you sleep with just a sheet on, I mean, not talking air conditioner, I'm just talking just regular. If you sleep with a sheet on, you might be okay, but if you sleep with a big, big comforter like this, you're going to get really, really too hot, and that's what's happening to our earth right now because of the carbon the carbon dioxide and the methane from the industrial processes let me show you on this next slide all right so the gases in the atmosphere that trap it are called the greenhouse gases and the ones that do it the worst are water vapor carbon dioxide and methane those are the three worst nitrous oxide somewhat but i want you to memorize the other three water vapor carbon dioxide and methane but they don't exist in very high concentrations at all. Do you remember looking at our map? Let me see if I do the bigger pen. Okay, so when we had our, our pie chart, all right, we had the big pie chart where most of the air was nitrogen, all right? 78% is nitrogen, and only 21%, is this gonna work? That's the wrong color, try this. Um, only 21% is you can't even tell the difference the colors I'm sorry is oxygen but this tiny little section right here this little bitty last 1% get some colors that are working better this little bitty 1% right here all right that is the three greenhouse gases that tiny little 1% water vapor carbon dioxide and methane now that is a tiny little amount a tiny little amount of the atmospheric gases but they are so powerful as far as holding heat nitrogen doesn't hold any heat neither does oxygen but these little greenhouse gases they really really do and the thing about it is is they are such a small amount of our atmosphere and they are so powerful that the things that we do that make it worse create a huge effect all right now it's a lot of it's just natural processes right there greenhouse effect started off as a natural process and it's just the gases changing because like photosynthesis right the trees take in carbon dioxide and the animals put out carbon dioxide that carbon is one of the things that changes the temperature all right those are natural processes but what's happening now is that the industrial processes things that we as humans are doing like the burning of fossil fuels and all of our factories they're increasing the amounts of carbon dioxide and methane in the air even our farming practices 
okay, with the cows, as many cows as we have, is increasing the amounts of carbon dioxide and methane in the air. And those small amounts are incredibly powerful as changing the temperature. Like we said with the albedo effect, we didn't even realize that the amount, the amount of change that can occur with just the slightest bit of trouble from us. All right, so this is one of the things we've got to focus with our atmosphere. All right, and that's, I think, the end of our notes. So you guys have a good lesson, and I'll see you again the next time.